Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I want to invite you to hit that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment if you will. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive all of our updates. God bless you. Come on, let's get to the Word. The second question today, is the grave empty? Remember, all Christianity hangs in the balance on this one question. Did Jesus really rise from the grave? Paul wrote, he said, if the grave is not empty, our faith is in vain, our preaching is vain. The atheist said, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, it's like taking a, pull out the card and the whole house of cards falls. So let's look at the record and walk through Matthew's account. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 27 and read uh, beginning in verse 62. The Bible says the next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priest and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remembered that while he was still alive, that the deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give this order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he is raised from the dead, has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. So the skeptics were already preparing for some possible nefarious deception. Next verse, verse 65. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go and make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and they made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. Let's walk through this. The seal that they had placed on the tomb was a sign of authentication that the tomb was occupied and the power and the authority of Rome stood behind the seal. Anyone found breaking the Roman seal would suffer a horrible death. They would make it public because how many of you know you don't go against Rome? So here's a question I have for you. Why would any of his followers, the followers of Jesus, even want to steal the body in hopes of what? They themselves believed he was dead. Why would, why would they steal the body? They were devastated. Read the scriptures. They were heartbroken. They were distraught. Why would they risk their own lives to steal a dead man's body? The Roman guard that was protecting the tomb wasn't just one man. The Roman guard was a 16-man unit that was governed by very strict rules. Each member was responsible for just six feet, six square feet of space. The guard members could not sit down or lean against anything while they were on duty. Kind of like, I don't know if you've ever seen over in Britain how they have that guy standing there. I mean, the brother doesn't even blink, right? I mean, he just stands there. But these guys, this Roman guard, they were the elite of the elite. They were the creme de la creme. They were the Navy SEALs. They were the best of the best or the Green Beret. They were highly trained, disciplined. They were very disciplined and they were armed to the teeth. Are you with me? If a guard member fell asleep, one of them, he was beaten and burned with his own clothes. But he was not the only one that was executed. All 16 of them got burned to death. So if we're a guard unit right here, and I know if one of y'all falls asleep, Sister Lisa, you ain't falling asleep, honey. I don't care how tired you are. Sister Ethel, no. Not if my can's on. Are you following me? So the chances of these, one of these brothers or any of these brothers falling asleep is ludicrous. Uh. Listen, once again, these weren't some schmucks off the street. Y'all with me? Let's read on. Matthew 28, next chapter, verse 1. It says, After the Sabbath, 
at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and he sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. Here it is, verse 4. The guards, plural, were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. These were like Navy SEALs. They were acting like little sissies. They probably messed themselves. Oh, come on. Somebody hear what I'm saying? They were shaking in their boots. The angel said to the woman, don't be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. Honey, he's not here. Ha. He's risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciple, suddenly, somebody shout, suddenly. How many of you know God appears? Suddenly. He, he doesn't have to catch the next flight out, somebody. He's not waiting for Uber. He's not checking the bus schedule. He appeared. Oh, I just got to preach a minute here. No matter what situation you're in, honey, suddenly, it doesn't matter if your bank account is broke, suddenly, it doesn't matter what your doctor's report says, suddenly, it doesn't matter if Mr. Boo walked out on you, suddenly, we serve a God of the suddenlies. Suddenly he appeared. My God. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and we only worship God. Oh, come on, you hear what I'm saying here? We don't worship anybody else. It's nonsense for anybody to proclaim that Jesus never uh, claimed deity. Because if he wasn't deity, he would have told them, stop. The disciples fell at his feet and worship. Stop. The angels throughout the book of Revelation are worshiping the Lamb of God, Jesus. If he wasn't God, he would have to tell them, stop. But Jesus never stopped anybody. When he rode in on the donkey, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. He said, they told him to make him stop. He said, I can't. Because if they don't, even the rocks will cry out. My God. Verse 11, watch. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. When the chief priest, the clergy, had met with the elders, they, defined, they devised a plan. Can somebody say corrupt clergy? Thank God we don't have any corrupt clergy today. Amen. <laughs> and there's money involved here. Watch this. What a, what, a, what, a, what a surprise here. They gave the soldiers a large sum of money. Taking the church's offering... and buying somebody off. <laughs> Telling them, you are to say, right, he's going to give them some talking points. His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. 
So here is the start of the misinformation campaign. Everybody's got their talking points. It's all over Facebook. It's all over Twitter. MSNBC breaking news. The body of Jesus was stolen. Listen, lie after lie after lie. Let's read on. Verse 14, if this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble because they knew death was their portion. So the soldiers took the cash and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day, which was in 85 AD when Matthew was written. So in 85 AD, they were still holding on to the body of Jesus was stolen. Here we are 2,100 years later, and how many know still believe that the body of Jesus was stolen? Now remember, the guards are thinking, listen, that this is their death sentence, that Jesus is missing. Because if they fell asleep on the job, they would be lit like a torch. But on the other hand, how did Jesus escape? The guarded tomb. So their conclusion is, let's lie, take the money, we'll take our chances. So therefore, one of the earliest instances of excuses, deception, and the birth of disinformation and misinformation occurred concerning the resurrection was right here at the tomb. Now, I'm sure that the propaganda media grabbed onto this story. All the social media sites were blowing up with the lie. The body was stolen. The body was stolen. Everybody's repeating. You know, hey, after all, the FBI said it was true. Oh, I hope y'all heard that. CIAs, they're, they're affirming it. We, we have a document with 50 of them that say it was true. Look, Jesus was stolen. Hmm. After all, the Roman guard said it was true. It has to be right, right? Wrong. Here's a biblical principle, saints of God. If you refuse, because that's what they did, if you refuse to believe the truth, you will believe the lie. Romans chapter 1, because they refused to worship the Creator, they began to worship the created. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Because they refused to believe the truth, they believed the lie. Because they believed the lie, God himself sent a strong delusion. Do you see the days we're living in? Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I hope you enjoyed today's short word. Now, you can help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the earth by simply hitting that like button, subscribing to our channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And last but not least, share this message with all your friends and family. Well, God bless you and Maranatha. Jesus Christ is coming soon.